So Mistral, the uh, European AI company, has released its first thinking model. It's called Magistral and it's available in a few different varieties and the smallest one is open weights which means it's been uploaded onto the internet for you to download and use however you want. In fact Olama supports it today and that's what we're going to be using to testing it out. Now because of its size 24 billion parameters that means when you use a bit of quantization you can squeeze that into about 14 gigabytes which if you have a high-end graphics card then you should be able to run this purely from the uh, video RAM on your GPU. In fact, I'm going to be testing it using an RTX 3090 with 24 gigabytes of RAM. I'm getting about 40 tokens a second for the output. Now in this video, I want to take it through its paces, test it out in different ways, and then give a conclusion about how well this model performs. Remember, all this is happening locally on your PC. If you've got a good, even a gaming PC, a good gaming GPU, you're going to be able to do this. So if you want to find out more, please let me explain. Okay, so here I am over on my Linux PC. It's got a uh, NVIDIA 3090 graphics card in it with, as you can see here, 24 uh, gigs of memory. And we're going to be using Olama. So let's go ahead and start up Olama and ask our first question. So Alice has five brothers. She also has three sisters. How many sisters does Alice's brother have. Now the answer should be four because you have to understand that Alice ha and the sisters are all sisters. So from a brother's point of view there should be four of them. Now as you can see here it's going through the thinking process and there's quite a lot of thinking going on here. As you can see it's going up listing different variations of family members and boys and girls and how many sisters and how many brothers. And uh, it will take, I think, a couple of minutes. We'll see at the end how long it takes uh, to give us the answer. Okay, so the whole thing has taken just over two minutes. And let's go and have a look. Therefore, the final answer is four. And it's, of course, it's using a bit of uh, formatting syntax here. But the answer is four. So it's got the answer right. It took it two minutes of thinking, but uh, that's pretty impressive. Okay, so the results from the Alice question are encouraging, but there's more questions coming. Okay, here's the next one I do. Read the following text and pick the most unusual word in the text. Find a one word synonym for that word that you have picked. Take the synonym and reverse it. And then I give an example. The reverse of spoon is uh, noops. And then here is a text. And basically it needs to pick a word. Normally it would pick quixotical and then it would find a synonym for it and then reverse it. So this is showing a comprehension of the text working out which words are unusual words, and then a set of instructions on what it should do once it's found that word. So let's go ahead and let's see what it does. Okay, so it said the most unusual word is alchemy. It didn't pick quixotical. That's quite interesting. I wouldn't agree that's the most unusual word, but there you go. A suitable one word synonym would be uh, magic, okay, if it's used metaphorically. And then the reverse of magic is C-I-G-A-M, which is correct. Took it about a minute and a half to come up with that answer. That's not the answer I would come up with, really, but that's quite interesting. But it did do what we asked, picked an unusual word, found a synonym and then reversed it. Okay, so is this test, did it didn't pick uh, the right word? Is this a sign of a weakness? Well, let's keep going. Another area of interest is sentiment analysis. In this question here, I give it various reviews about a keyboard and ask it to pick which review shows the most negative sentiment. And it's able to pick out the most negative one quite simply. I then also got it to write an outline for an essay about the Battle of the Bulge. It handled that quite well. The structure was good. The historical points it was underlining were good. And it even went as far as to say how many words should be used uh, in each section to give the essay a balance. I also tested its summarization skills. I gave it a long article from andrewauthority.com and then it was able to read that and reduce it to just one paragraph and it did contain the main points that you would want from such a short uh, summary of the article. Okay, next another logic question. You have two hourglasses, one that measures exactly 10 minutes, another that ma exactly measures five minutes. Using only these two hourglasses, can you measure exactly 15 minutes? If so, explain the steps involved. Okay, so it's been thinking for just over two minutes. Let's see what it says. At zero time start, flip both the five and the 10 minute hourglasses. When the five minute hourglass runs out after five minutes, leave it in its upright empty position without flipping it, okay? Wait until the 10 minute hourglass runs out at the 10 minute mark. 
at this point flip the five minute which is correct which is sitting empty and that will give you another five minutes so that's correct so that is an almost perfect answer almost perfect except of course you didn't need to flip that five minute one at the beginning you could have just left it as it was but that is an absolutely uh, brilliant answer so the model seems to be redeeming itself with this first hourglass question now i have a follow-up question which is a bit more tricky you've got two hourglasses uh, one that measures seven minutes and one that measures 11 minutes and the aim again is to measure 15 minutes. Love to hear your thoughts on this because it's a quite interesting ways to solve it uh, and we'll see what uh, you can come up with in the comments below, do tell me. Okay, so it's been thinking for five minutes. It is impossible to measure exactly 15 minutes using a seven and an 11 minute timer, blah, blah, blah. Well, that's not right, there is a way of doing it. I'll leave it as an open question, do tell me in the comments below. Other online LLMs do get this right. Unfortunately, there's no way other to uh, say this, but that is a bit of a fail. Now, I tried the larger Magistral uh, large language model, which is available online through Le Chat, and I tried that, and it still gives the same answer. It says it can't be done. So this seems to be a bit of a weakness in the model uh, across the whole family. Okay, let's move over to programming. Write a program that takes the phrase Gary explains uh, exclamation mark counts the number of alphabetic characters in the phrase ignoring punctuation and spaces will ignore that exclamation mark for example multiply that count by seven convert it into a hexadecimal number reverse the digit of the hexadecimal number and then print it out let's see whether it can do that okay so you've been thinking for about two and a half minutes maintaining this output rate of 40 something uh, tokens a second however what's interesting here is it hasn't written the Python programs. It didn't do what it said. It's done a lot of thinking about trying to work out what the answer actually is by going through it. Uh, and it's saying the correct output is 6.4, which is actually wrong. Um, and it's very interesting. At some point, it's it's changed the phrase to uh, Gary exams. Uh, and that happened during the thinking here. And it didn't give me a Python program. So that's that's quite disappointing. I Most LLMs, even the simpler ones, give you an answer and, and i've said on a couple other videos that sometimes overthinking which is what some of these llms do overthinking destroys the answer and you get the wrong answer by overthinking so there's a big fail there i'm afraid so this first programming test is a bit of a disappointment in fairness there is devistral that's the uh, developer the programming version of the Mistral kind of family of uh, models. I've tested that in a previous video that is designed purely for programming, but I'm a bit surprised that this thing didn't really even write any Python code for us. In fact, I did go on to test the development skills of the model a bit further. I asked it to write a specification that a software engineer could read and use to implement some functionality. It wrote the specification. I then asked it to implement it in C and it didn't write any C code again. Some snippets, some general ideas, but it didn't write any C code. And then I tried to get it to write a tic-tac-toe, noughts and crosses for those of you in uh, the UK, to write a program that could learn to play uh, tic-tac-toe using machine learning and then play a player uh, using a menu. And it didn't do that either. And so there you have it. Now let's just remember this is all running locally on a graphics card on a local PC. Nothing is going up to the cloud. Now the programming side of it does seem to be a bit of a weakness. As I said, there are other large language models in from the same company that just specifically target programming. This seems to have a weakness in that area. However, in just about everything else, it did manage to do a good job, except for that more complicated logic question with the hourglasses. Anyway, why don't you give it a spin? It's there, go over to Olama, install it, try it out. Hopefully you can run most of it inside of your graphics card. It will run on a PC as well, just on the CPU, of course, it's gonna be a bit slow, but do let me know how you get on with it in the comments below. Okay, that's it. My name is Gary Sims. This is Gary Explains. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. If you like these kind of videos, then I invite you to stick around. Join us. Subscribe to the channel. Also, please don't forget to check out my Patreon page. Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.